Hi guys, we're back again here. We've just got to we're gonna try something a bit different here on the West Coast Games channel. So it's been recommended in a couple of the um, comments on the video and obviously the post where I've been posting it that I should try things a little differently instead of running a two hour video, run two separate videos, one where I can dive deeper into the deck as a deck tech and then the other video is just straight into the games running the five five matches in the league. So <clears throat> basically um, I'm just just going to go through this deck really. Um, it's quite an interesting one, it's one that's been popped popping up a bit recently in quite a lot of leagues. If you've seen the other two videos, um, you see I've had four times in two leagues. Um, yeah, which is, this basically is Mono Red Blitz or Mono Red Kiln Fiend. Um, <clears throat> well, the deck has got a lot of new toys, which is why I think it's very popular at the moment. Um, it got anywhere between 12 to 15, I believe, cards. So all these cards here are Crimson Val. And you can obviously, the numbers aren't exactly set in stone. So you've got four Ancestral Angers, uh, which is just another one of those one mana cycles, you know, similar to Crash Through, uh, Expedite, ex etc. Uh, but this gets bigger the more you've seen and also draws a card and gives Trample, which is very relevant. Um, you've obviously got four Festival Crashes. Which isn't exactly new from Val, but it's pretty new in given the deck redundancy. Uh, <clears throat> obviously having 8 Kiln Fiends or pseudo Kiln Fiends is a lot better than not. Uh, obviously previously the blue red decks have ran the Cyclops. so they've, But obviously 3 mana and being blue is a lot different. Um, the other card is the Kessig Flame Breather, which isn't an exactly a new card. It is from Val, but the... Um, the previous one, the Firebrand Archer, is only a 2-1. So it's a lot easier to kill. Um, dies to things like Lava Dart, Gutshot, Electricery. Um, so I do like this card and I do like the addition of this card. I don't think it is a straight up 4 of. Um, <clears throat> hence why I'm only running 2. Uh, I do think it gives the deck a little bit of reach. Gives the, you know, effectively 10 threats, which is quite nice. Um, and I do think the last card is the real reason why it's a, a good... Is, is seem to be picking up a lot more, is Reckless Impulse. This card is just stupidly good. It, it's very, very good for the deck. Uh, and it's definitely what you want. Uh, I am only running three, but there is the fourth in the board. Um, I'll get into that in a moment, but... <coughs> excuse me. Those are the new additions. Uh, everything else should look pretty straightforward. So you have I have a two-two split. This list, oh, I must say before I start, this list isn't uh, anyone's that I've seen. It's based off an amalgamation of other lists around there. You know, I've seen people try Lotus Petal. I've seen people have Team of Battle Rage in the main. Um, this is. After running it a few, few practice events and a couple of leagues, this is kind of the list that I've I've came together with. Uh, and I'll go through all my deck, my deck choices and decisions and card choices, etc. Um, and why I've went with certain cards over the others. Um, the main one is, the main two things are, I would say are only run two, kiln, uh, two flame breathers. Um, I don't think you want the full four in the main. I just think you get... You get a lot of draws where it's just Kill Fiend, Festival Crasher, Flame Breather, and you've got no actual spells of doing anything. So you're just playing guys, and when you get to that clunky kind of draw, that's it's not what you want. You, the deck's just too slow. Um, they have then time to develop the mana, develop what they're doing. You know, Arcane Answer Loops, Ghostly Flicker Loops, Mnemonic Wall Loops. You know, hold up, cast down, hold up, counter spell. They get to that point. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's why I don't think it needs the full full four flame breathers. I do think the deck gets reach off the flame breathers, um, but yeah, I don't think it needs the full four. Not in the not in the sixty, anyways. I do have the two in the side for when I feel like that is necessary. Um, my other interesting card choices, I think, is there's no team of battle rage in the main. Uh, I'm going for three assault scrolls. Um, there are pros and cons to both. Obviously, team of battle rage costs two mana. 
but it does give trample on its own, which is the biggest downside to a salt strobe. Um, I don't really think the difference between the instant sorcery matters too much. <coughs> Excuse me. I do think that a salt strobe is personally better in this deck compared to Team of Battle Rage. I've tried 3 1 the other way, I've tried 4 0, uh, I've tried 2 2. And a lot of the time when I did get the Team of Battle Rage, it was just I wish this was an assault strobe. Um, obviously that is in a small sample size. I just feel like this deck, especially with the way it's constructed with Rite of Flames, it is literally trying to turn one, Rite of Flame out a Kiln Fiend or a Festival Crasher. They hopefully play a tap land and then you can effectively kill them. So the trample isn't as important. Um, if it does come up that it is, say you're against an aggro deck or you're against Boros Bully or something that does can have one drops or turn one players, well that might interact with you. Um, <clears throat> I do feel like you can take it slower and obviously it, it does does come up sometimes but I, I just think the deck is trying to be faster and I I would say that the Assault Strobe is generally better. I've had more success with the Assault Strobe than I have the Team of Battle Rage. Um, <clears throat> but that is the probably the main difference is this and also some don't run Right of Flame which I think is just incorrect. Right of Flame, the, the turn one Right of Flame threat is just such a better hand than than not like it, it, it's so much faster you, your aim is to literally hopefully you you go first you turn one kill them then play tap line you kill them and that is the aim of the deck is just kill them as fast as possible the deck does because of the reckless impulses i do believe that the deck has some reach now you can you know turn one threat turn two threat you've got backup they now basically can't they can't answer you in the sense because you've just got two threats that can only have really one blocker or one kill spell and then you can kill them but i do think given that the right of flame draws are just so important for the deck that it is just reach um the next card choice is obviously faith is living you just need some cycling sometimes sometimes you you know after you empty your hand quite quickly you sometimes just need the card selection not card draw and it's fine a lot of your cards do draw a card obviously like your metamorphos the reckless impulses the ancestral angers they do replace themselves which is quite nice <clears throat> but sometimes you just need specific things you're looking for threats you're looking for x y or z you're looking for the uh, salt strobe faith of certain just gets there um the other option the other card choices is apostle's blessing which is fairly obvious it's just protection uh there is only three in the deck there's one in the side um because the the way the deck is constructed you're just trying to be as quick as possible you're hoping to go under their removal um after that, you've got Mutagenic Growth, which is a straight-up 4 of. Uh, it needs to be a 4 of, because there's so much Galv Blast, so much Bolt about that. It just, you need that. And that, that basically makes, that is a pseudo-protection spell, but it's also a spell that goes off as well. So I do think that card is definitely necessary. Uh, I think I would run 6 if I could. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for the tech choices the other the last four flex slots i would say are the two good shots two lava darts um <clears throat> it's some form of interaction um it does basically make the clock they are effectively free spells either on the sacrifice mountain side on the lava dart the flashback side or the free spell on the good shot um a lot of the time i i do find them just going face and that's fine it, it's just a pseudo extra damage more damage face means just less less that actually has to uh you have to put into the festival crasher and the kiln fiend um i do think they're a bit more relevant than normal especially now that festival crasher is in the deck because it only does give plus two so and you do need more spells um <clears throat> and that and that's why i do think it does end up going face a lot is because of that one damage does actually end up mattering with the festival crasher over time um, obviously turns it a two damage with flame breathers etc but i think they're they're, they're not <coughs> they're not necessary as such but i do think they are really important at the moment and they also do interact really well with fear which i personally think is not a good matchup um <coughs> i do think the deck overall struggles with most cast down decks which as you'd expect because as you can tell how the deck is configured with only three blessings four growth um 
that you you're effectively relying on them. A only having the one removal spell, and you can you were a perfectly timed apostle's blessing, and a lot of the time it just doesn't line up. They have different ways to interact with you, and it effectively just means that most of the time you you've got snuff out, you've got cast down, and the just fair matchup just doesn't doesn't line up very well. I don't think I do think the blue red version is a lot better because their their removal is as as you'd expect is Scred and Lightning Bolt <coughs> and Mutagenic Growth does a hell of a good job at answering those. Uh, obviously Mutagenic Growth answers a Lightning Bolt and a Kiln Fiend, for example. Um, and hence why I, I do believe it is a good protection spell and that's why I think there's four of at the moment over the, the blessings and I do think it's a better card when being aggressive. <coughs> Um, and I think that's it for the main board, I believe. Um, the other choices I guess I've seen are between anywhere between 16 and 18 lands. Um, I believe if you are going to not run a Salt Strobe and run Team of Battle Rage, I think 18 lands is correct. Um, <clears throat> and I'd probably cut something like a Lava Dart if I was going to make that change. But personally, I don't think it's correct. Um, a card that's, I think, necessary, but I've also been unimpressed with his mana morphos. It does replace itself and it is effectively free. But there is times where for example you you want to go off but you want to hold a protection at the same time and only having two lands you can effectively tap out for mana morphos and then in response to the mana morphos before you get your mana there there's obviously you create windows for them to interact with you. Um and I'm not saying it comes up often, it's not like you can, you know, you can hold up whatever but um, <clears throat> I do believe that it creates those awkward windows sometimes because you are only running 17, sometimes even 16 lands and you kind of effectively get mana screwed or, well not mana screwed, but stuck on two lands which is kind of what you want but also in some scenarios like that with mana morphos it can be awkward um, and that's you know, one of the only downsides I've noticed with the card but I think the upside outweighs the negatives Um but yeah, I think that I think that's it for the main board. I think the deck is very strong, very well positioned at the moment, and I do believe people are now trying to know how to play against it. But I do think it's still very well positioned, and it's the mono red version is very very aggressive, and it can just go under so much. <clears throat> Moving on to the sideboard, this is effectively my own curated list of sideboard, so it's just based on a what I've seen other people try, and my own thoughts on how the how the matchup actually how matchups actually line up so yeah i do believe that the cyborg might not be the correct amount of numbers um but i do think it's a pretty good cyborg i've been quite impressed with it the only thing i can maybe think of is effectively one of these free spells or the team of battle rage could be a third red elemental blast um, but that depends on what you think everything is popular I, I believe I'm more looking at the the matchup of I'm going to avoid as much fear as possible uh, I'm going to prepare for it slightly but I'm not going to over commit to it um, and that's why I think there's only two in the board now, I could see putting a third in um, even though in all my leagues that I seem to record there's no affinity about I have put at least three artifact cards in the board um, they're not straight up committed for affinity as this has other uses obviously while being aggressive <coughs> and this it does have some uses it's just been a free spell i have first affinity and use this as basically just a free pump spell blow up an indestructible land just to go for lethal um <coughs> but yeah i do think this, these cards are kind of necessary and i do like the numbers because there's not over committed on the board and also there's not too little in that you won't see them uh, the one of Mind Collapse is one that I haven't seen many people run, but I do think the the card is is pretty good, as especially because I'm running a Salt Strobe. Um, you know, if say Dex Blue Black Control, for example, is trying to get out an early Gurmagangala or or Mer Enforcer, etc. You know, these these kind of these kind of cards are trying to cheat out really early. Um, this deck struggles with that kind of thing because not a lot of the cards give trample or protection there's only seven cards in the deck four that give trample and three that give the protection so it's quite nice to just have a free spell to basically get rid of the threat and move on and then can swing for lethal if 
if you have that kind of hand. Um, the fourth reckless impulse is kind of with the two flame breathers. They're kind of in that matchup, you know, the, the black matchups, the grindier matchups where they're going to answer your threats, going to answer your threats early, and you just need more threats, more cards. Um, <clears throat> and, I've, and I've been pretty impressed with them. Um, you know, you can you can even use the flame breathers as an actual pseudo kiln fiend. Um, you know, I've double angered to assault strobe, you were you were to squeeze through the final points of damage while the waste and all the kills cast down and snuff out or on your festival crash and your kiln fiends. <clears throat> or just generally while the while they're using all their removal on that, generally just keep casting spells, keep drawing cards and eventually they will whittle them down. Um that's where those are for. The tier of battle rage is pretty much any matchup where you think will go long. Uh, I sometimes board all these together. Um, but yeah, it's just another double strike effect. That is instant speed. And it does give the trample where there is going to be a lot of blockers. So um, It's not one that comes in a lot. But just when, when I think it's necessary based on the removal or what answers they'll have. It's generally, I have bought it in say like game 3 where I've... I've Went under them game one, game two. I've seen what the boarded and the sideboard plan is, and then boarded back into it on game three. Um, <clears throat> Apostle's blessing just for those matchups, basically where you, you your mutagenic growths aren't very good. Your cast downs again. It, the deck does struggle with hard removal. Um, it's fairly straightforward that card. To be fair, flare and pain is for generally the Tron matchups. Uh, the Boros Bully or the Red White Aggro matchups, you know, with the Prismatic Strands, the uh, <coughs> Moments Pieces, etc. Just just things that prevent damage, really. Um, that that It's fairly straightforward. It's quite easy to pitch to loot in to then get it for cheaper. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty powerful card. You don't want too many. You just want to see it at the right time. Um, fairly straightforward. Uh, and the festivities is for aggro and for fear. Obviously, just anything that deals one damage. It is an upgrade from Blazing Volley as it does hit them for one. Uh, so it is just chip damage, which again is is necessary. I would say <coughs> you would straight up just run this over Blazing Volley personally or Electric Re because it does hit that damage face. And I don't think the instant speed matters too much. Um, and being one mana cheaper than Electric Re is also necessary. Uh, I do think that the slow chip damage that you do gain from the end of festivities and the good shots lava darts are, are relevant <clears throat> and then two red elemental blasts for any counter decks or mono blue base decks I do, I, I do again overall i do think this deck is well positioned at the moment i do think people are starting to bring hate specifically for this um <clears throat> and i do also think that it doesn't have a very good cast down matchup and you do try to avoid that card just as much as possible Things like Affinity that run a couple of copies here and there you can get away with. That they're the kind of matchups where you want to cheese out the win with the blessing on the perfectly timed cast down because they're most likely not going to have the next answer. They're not going to have the the Galv Blast or they're not going to have the the snuff out or any other any other sort of answer to your one guy to then untap and then kill them. Uh, the deck is fast. I've killed a lot of people on turn two, um, and it's very easy to do. And that is basically what the deck is trying to do. Kill them on turn two as often as possible. <clears throat> I could see an argument for cutting down on the good shots lava darts to then go to Lotus Petal. To then be maximise turn two as much as possible. <clears throat> but that's a lot more all in than I'm prepared to go. Especially for a, a league where you, know, you, <clears throat> you have so many different decks that you could verse. Um... But I think that's it. I, I would really recommend picking up this deck. I've had quite a lot of success with it. Um, worst I've done is a 3-2 so far. Um, and it's pretty powerful. You'd be surprised how many people don't expect it. <coughs> uh, if you have any have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. And uh, tell us if you like the new format of the videos. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.